Okay, boys and girls, we're back again, and today we're going to examine how to use a Gauss meter. Uh, first, I'd like to thank everyone that's called and emailed your reaction, your response. The feedback to the videos has been extremely positive, so we'll try and keep them going. All right, Gauss meters. Now, there's some individuals like the Bedrock Bunch, they're the only ones actually that will have us believe that we're just not smart enough to use a Gauss meter. That there's only one person pretty much in the world that's smart enough to use a Gauss meter. And they'll try and dazzle you with various techno babble. Well, let's see if there's any truth to it. I've been using a Gauss meter since the since the 80s for close to 25 years now and I can tell you that it's an invaluable tool for matching magnets for comparing magnets to each other and there's no reason on earth why anyone can't do this if you can use a multimeter you can use a Gauss meter my original one from Applied Magnetics Labs died last year, so I bought this little one from John Giusello, and I like it for the most part. It's got some minor shortcomings, but for the price, it's I think it's a uh, good unit. So let's get started. We've got two switches here. Switch it on. It's not exactly at zero. It usually just reads one gas but I'd say it's close enough. Now this has a limit of 2,000 gauss. We'll get to that in a, in a second here. You can measure up to 3,999 actually. This is the lower scale we're on right now. We'll just take some ceramic, strontium ferrite, and super strontium magnets from Tycho's now John you'll see has a brass probe it's brass channel and inside is a little Hall effect sensor and he scribes a line on the side you want to use the line is where the, the location of the sensor so let's try and get this in the camera we want to hold the probe flat nice and flat along the magnet and just slowly slide it along and let's see what the highest reading is that we get. We have to watch the time. We have to keep these under 10 minutes. Okay, this one, highest reading was about 800. And you notice it also tells you the polarity. That's minus. Let's try another one. and it's pretty close. I'm moving it a little faster for the sake of time. Okay, let's try another one. Let's get a positive one. And already that was around 790. So those are very close. Now, let's take the next step in progression. We'll go to a Titan, the original polymer magnet. This is the second generation. And you can see that's quite a bit stronger. 1230. Next step up would be a Polymax magnet we have here. And let's see, what does that read? Stronger still. Okay, now let's try a bonded, Palmer bonded Panther traction magnet and see what happens. Goes off the scale. So we go down, switch down to the higher scale. Maybe that switch should be turned around and we double the reading. So if that's 1125, the actual 
Gauss is 2250. I think most of us are smart enough to do that, to double the reading. That one's very close, as you can see, 2280. All right, let's keep going. In about five minutes. We'll do this in two parts so we don't rush too badly. And here we have a an X-wing traction. This is a grade 19. Okay, so it's over 2200. Here we have some grade 25s. And you can see that's up closer to almost 25. Yeah, about 2,500. Now, if we read the other side, that's about the same. So you can check both sides of a magnet to get an even better picture. Let's try a neomagnet. I had some. Okay, here's a neo panther motor magnet. If I can get it off, they're so strong. don't want to let these snap against themselves. They will break very easily, as I'm sure many of you know. Neomagnets are extremely brittle. And here we have 28, over 2,800. Let's try the other one. If you just picked it random. That one's a bit stronger. But very close. So as you can see, there's really nothing very complex about it. Nothing at all. But we'll talk more about that in part two, I think. So we've shown you the range from ceramic up to the grade 25s and neomagnets. Now, if you should race unlimited, you will have magnets that gauss over 4,000. And what you can do is just cut a small plastic shim. We'll try this real quickly. You can take a piece of scrap plastic. This is an old business card. We might be safe with this one. Let's see. This was a a magnet that had a large groove ground in it to reduce the flux in the center. So that's about 3600. If you get one that goes over the scale, you can use a shim, cover the probe with it, and it will reduce the reading as you can see. This is thin, it only reduced it by about 100 gauss or so. But if you took, say, a 25 or 20 thousandths piece of plastic, and you'll still be able to get an indication of one magnet to the next, a good comparison. If you do that, I would suggest using the same shim all the time so you have consistency. And we're almost finished with part one. Don't have too much more time on this one. Uh, the probe itself, after use, the, especially the bonded magnets, the bits of powder are abrasive, so you can see you get some scratching. Well, I don't know if you can see it. You get some scratching on the brass. If this had been nickel plated, that would be great. But there's a way around that, and we'll get to that in part two. So we'll be right back.